go, let's go. Welcome back to another week here at CFS Online. Yes. And you know you missed us. We're your favorite hosts. You're not supposed to have favorites, but we know we are. Come on. Um, but we're so excited you chose to join us on a Friday night. You could be doing anything else. That's right. Anything else. Literally anything else, like washing <laughs> your dog, washing the car. I don't know why I'm just saying washing things. Yeah. But you could be doing. Splash bash, that's what it was. Yeah, I think it was just all the water stuff from Splash Bash. But literally, you could be doing anything else. But you chose to be here with us, and we love you for that. And we want to stay connected with that's you. Right. And it's so easy. You, all you have to do is just go to cfmiami.org slash connect to stay connected with us so you can stay a part of the family. That's and right stay in touch with all of our craziness. That's right, talking about craziness, mm -hmm. man, last week we had such a crazy but fun time in our very own Splash, Splash Bash. Bash. Come on. Oh my goodness. Man, I heard this, I don't know if this is a rumor, I don't know if this is true, but did you get splashed on last week? Okay, look, this is what happened. We learned that Jess is just not good at water related games. I'm not good at basically any games. And I think honestly, I just don't have any sort of luck when competing against Lewis. I've just got to accept it. But if you didn't see last week's hosting, you need to like pause, go check that out that because I got super wet in a most epic fashion. I'm not cheating. And yeah, so I definitely got wet, but I think you did too. I did. Yeah. Truthfully, I did. Uh, that was in our midweek content. Yeah. Um, so if y'all need to check that out, check that out. Last mm -hmm. Wednesday, uh, amazing race. It was me and Alex. We, we we challenged each other, and and unfortunately, because of the cheating and the rules, oh, there's cheating. There was cheating. I there was, was there. cheating. Um, but anyways, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hop on that. You're I not got bitter you. about it at all. I'm not. I'm not bitter no, about not, it at all. Not at all. Not, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Actually, anyways, splash bash. Yes. Back to splash yes. bash. Yes, splash bash was extremely fun, man. But we have an event coming up in the month of February. I'm not gonna spoil it yet. So next week, stay tuned because we'll be announcing it next week. Yep. Make sure to come back next week, Friday night, because we'll be announcing it. But man, we're gonna continue to worship through our giving. So just talk yes, to us. Yes, most definitely. I mean, honestly, family like. We're able to do things like Splash right. Bash. We're able, honestly, to reach multiple students mm. and other folks through our online platforms. We're not able to do any of that without your giving. That's and understand right. that thousands of people are receiving the message of Jesus because of your giving and how the impact of this online, these online services yep. are having all throughout South Florida and even throughout the world. And you can be a part of that. Yep. And it's so easy to do that. Super simple. All you have to go is to cfmiami.org slash give and you can give that way. That's right. Yep. So we've also got, moving out of that, but before we get into our message, before we get into our service, we're actually wrapping up a new series Oof. called Distinct. Distinct. <laughs> and it's been a really special series because we've really been talking about how God made us distinct and because God is distinct, we're distinct too. Right. And tonight we're hearing from Pastor Lewis, right. who's wrapping up our series and basically reminding us that we can celebrate our distinctiveness but also the distinctness of other people. That's right. So we are all distinct and that's something to be celebrated. So it's a, such a powerful message and there's a real powerful worship moment mm. in this service. So you really don't want to miss it. That's right. Um, but before we get to that, really, I mean, honestly, like just thinking about that time of worship and like, you know, some people, you know, we see online where we talk about like, you know, do you close your eyes, raise your hands or that kind of thing. I know it's like, it's such an intimate and like personal thing for yeah. a lot of people. And I guess like, when did you feel like, I'm gonna ask you Gabe, okay. when did you feel like your time of worship really became like a really, I guess like you really stepped it up or like really stepped into that sort of intimate level of worship? That's a good question. I think that uh, when I understood what worship meant mm -hmm. is when I actually started to 
feel as if I was worshiping God. Worship isn't, uh, there's not a specific way or specific mm -hmm. act. It's really just a posture of your heart. Yep. You can worship God not only through your yeah. giving, you can worship uh, God through your service. You can worship God through praising Him. Yep. You can worship God from your heart. That's what a worship is. It's a posture of heart towards the Lord. And so, man, I encourage you in, your, in this worship moment, make sure that your heart is aligned with, with what you're thinking about, with, with what you're talking about, with what you're speaking about, with what you're praising the Lord with. Make sure that your heart is connected with the words that you're speaking with. And so I, that's Definitely. why I encourage you guys um, in, this worship, in this time of worship, in this worship moment, Make sure that your heart is connected and it's aligned with the things that we speak about. Definitely. Yeah, same for me. Like, I know, like, when I was in church, there was, like, a distinct moment. Yeah. Like, there's certain milestones that happen, mm. like, in youth group and when I was a young adult and things, like, where, like, my beliefs became mine. That's right. And then when, you know, finally, like, it became less weird, Yeah. I guess, to, like, close your eyes or to raise your hands kind of thing because it wasn't a show. That's right. And I think, and it came down to like exactly what you said, being in the word and really like being, um, I guess, intentional about your relationship with Jesus. That's right. So students, we really do pray that you really lean into this message and really Amen. lean into this time of worship that we're gonna take during tonight's service. Um, and that you really don't just let that pass by or even fast forward through it or even skip it, but really lean into it and allow God to work in your heart. And maybe Amen. this is that night that you really your personal worship transforms and just grows into something more intimate. That's right. But students, we love you. and We pray that this service really does bless you and we will see you back here next week. Let's go. Peace. Come on. Hey, what's up, CF students, man? I'm so excited that we're ending the series. I want everybody to say distinct. Man, we're ending this series called Distinct, and it's been a powerful series, man. Shout out to Pastor Alex. Come on, across all campuses, can we give it up for Pastor Alex? That's my boy, my brother from another mother, and I'm so glad if you're watching this from any of our campus. Redland, shout out to you guys. Come on, Redland, make some noise right where you are. Come on, I need Doral, make some noise. CG Downtown, make some noise. Palmetto Bay, make some noise. West Kendall, make some noise noise. Hey, my name is Lewis and I get to serve um, at, man, I'm not trying to be biased, but I am at Palmetto Bay. Come on, Palmetto Bay, make some noise where you're at. Ah! I'm telling you, something just broke, okay? We wow, we turn up at Palmetto Bay. Something just broke as everyone's making noise and clapping and cheering and all that good stuff. Somebody just jumped on a chair and did a backflip. So I don't know. Something wild happened. But hey, I'm excited to end off this series we got going on called Distinct. Amen. We've been talking about God and how he's unique and how he's just awesome and how he's amazing. And he's like no other. Ain't nobody like Jesus, man. But I also love that we've been talking about ourselves, that God has made each and every one of us unique. God has made you different. God has made you special. God has made you distinct. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, you are distinct. Come on, look them in the eyes. Look in their soul and tell them you are are distinct. I want you to tell the other person next to you your second option for whatever reason and tell them you are distinct. Come on, remind them, let them know just in case they forgot that they're special, they're unique, and they're awesome before the eyes of the Lord. Amen. As we end this series, I know we talked about God and right now we just were reminded uh, about ourselves that we're distinct and we're special and unique. But today we're going we talked about all that, but now we're going to talk about everybody else. The person you just reminded that they're distinct. But, man, we're going to talk about people you love. We're going to talk about family. We're going to talk about even your enemy, people you don't love. And, man, we're going to jump into this scripture as we get ready to talk about everyone else's distinctions before our own perspective, right? Hey, I want you to go to Revelation chapter 7. Ooh, right? That's like that book that's like, ah. We about to go there. I invited my friend on the wrong night. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Revelation chapter 7. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I promise. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. When you got it, say, I got it. Come on. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 10. It says, after this, I looked and behold. Everybody say behold. Oh, I need y'all to say it like y'all got some faith here. To wherever you watch this, say behold. And behold, a great multitude that no one can number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples, 
and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice. Somebody say, a loud voice. There you go. Crying out with a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. That's our text for here right now. But man, we're going to jump into a moment of prayer for the word and for us all, wherever you're watching this from, whenever you're watching this from, if you're watching this in our campus or if you're watching this at home, at work, or at school, wherever, we know that this is going to be a great, great message for you. Hey, let's pray. God, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Jesus God, right now. We pray and we thank you for this series, um, Lord. We thank you that you just reminded us through your word that, man, we're, we're unique. We're distinct, God. You made us special. You've created us not to fit in with everybody else, God, but you made us and created us to stand out. And God, I thank you so much that we have the honor to serve you, to submit our lives, put our trust in you, to surrender to you, God to a God that's like no no other God. Ain't nobody like you, Jesus. And God, I thank you so much just for this moment that we can come together. And even if there's people watching online, Lord, thank you for your word and just for being able to come every Friday night, God. Just dive deep into your word and your scripture, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Come on. Hey, anybody love movies? I love movies. I'm a movie watcher, okay? Um, I, I'm a cheap, cheap person, okay? I'm cheap. Like, it's tough for me to go to the movie theaters and actually spend $100 on one ticket. Like, why is the theater so expensive? And let me not even talk about the popcorn, the drinks, the slushies, the candy, man, they giving me this little snicker bar, I think like $20. What are they doing, okay? Like, man, it's tough for me to actually go to the movie, but man, I love, like, man, how many of you guys saw Spider-Man No Way Home? Man, I'm not trying to spoil nothing, but that movie is one of the best movies I've ever seen, but I'm the type that, man, if I don't go to movies, I'll just watch it bootleg. I'll go on one of them websites and I'll just watch it for free. You know what I'm saying? Save me some money. Come on. I'll order me a $5 Little Caesars and I'll sit on my laptop and just watch it for free. But, man, a movie like Spider-Man, you can't watch that bootleg. Like, you got you got to actually go in person and experience that. Like, you got to sit there and not only are you experiencing the sound, it just hits different. Obviously, it's HD and it's, it looks good. But even the reaction of the people, like when a certain scene happens and everybody's like, oh, snap, right? Or something happens and, and everyone's cheering or man, and if something tragic or bad happens, you even hear the reaction of the people. Some people are crying. Some people are doing that. I remember when I saw Avengers Endgame and I remember when, well, it's called the blip, right? When the blip happened and people started like disappearing and turning into dust, like our favorite heroes, I can literally hear kids crying in the movie theater. Like there was some kid, man, if you have already seen Endgame, I don't know what to tell you. Are you living under a rock or something? Like everybody's seen Endgame already. It's years ago. But I remember when Spider-Man turned into dust. Like you, I literally heard a baby crying, like a small kid. Like, no, Spider-Man. No. Like I was like, dang, this is serious, right? So for me, to get me to the movies, it, I, I have to know that I'm going to experience something powerful like that. Like I got to know it's a, it's a good movie. And for me, one thing that I love that for me to able not for me to be able to know that's going to be a good or a bad movie is something as you guys already know it's called a trailer. Like you watch a trailer that's a few seconds long or, or a minute or two, three minutes long. Like when I saw the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, man, I was going crazy. I'm like, I have to see this in person. I got to go watch it. But if it's another movie, like I don't know, like a cartoon, I'm like, ah. Trailer. The trailer shows me if it's going to be good or not, right? Or if I'm going to enjoy it, et cetera. Maybe an idea of what it's going to be about, all that good stuff. I say that to say that that's basically what happened right now to John. What happened with John is that God showed John a vision. Everybody say vision. God was giving John a vision. Now, this isn't the same John that we all know and love. This isn't John the Baptist. No, 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 no. This is the one that's helped uh, for three years, man, walk with Jesus, all that good stuff. God literally gives him 
a vision, a clear vision of what's to come about heaven, about a bunch of other things. And I love that he's basically showing them like a trailer. He's showing them, hey, this was going to happen. Like, this is a glimpse of heaven. This is a glimpse of this. This is this. This is that. That's why, hey, come on, let's go. Let's keep it moving. But Man, I love that right here in this moment, in this trailer, you can see in this part, God shows John this vision. And as John is looking, he can see that there's multitudes of people. Man, multitudes meaning it could be hundreds, thousands, millions. It could, it's just a wave of people. And I love that it starts describing the crowd. It starts describing those multitudes of people. That it says, hey, there's people from different nations. There's people from all across the world. There's people that speak a different language. There's people maybe with a different skin color. There's people who come from different backgrounds. There's all kinds of distinct, different, unique, and special people in the room. And one thing that I love that all these people, they're not just there like chilling and Ian Ke- KFC or something. No, they're actually in there worshiping God. Bible says that they're there just crying out and worshiping God as he's sitting on the throne. Man, that's so beautiful. And as we end this series, man, I want us to talk about this vision right here that John is getting. Man, what it's showing right now is that God is looking at all these distinct, special, unique people just as we are. And he's showing John that, hey, in the kingdom of God, everybody's welcome. Can somebody say amen? Hey, there's not like a VIP tape every Friday night at our services or at our campuses or at our weekend services. There's not a VIP bodyguard in the front that's saying, hey, where are you from? What language you speak? What nation? What tribe? Ah, uh, brother, you too different, man. Uh, there's a somewhere else down the road you could go to, but hey, we don't do that here, bro. You ain't welcome. No, 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 there's none of that. What God is showing here is that, hey, everybody is Welcome. And I love that, man, we get to come here every Friday and you get to watch whatever day you watch this on, that you can go as different as you are, as unique as you are, as special as you are. You get to worship the God who died on that cross and rose from that grave, even as special, unique and distinct that you are. And I love that, man, the same way that God allows everyone to be welcome. I feel like we should live our life like that, too. That there's people different than us. Yes, there is. But we should welcome them just as God does. And man, the truth is sometimes we can get ourselves into a place where we think we're the standard in a sense of this. We think, oh my goodness, like they messed up like that? At least it was. I mean, I'm bad, but I ain't that bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh, they're this way? Ah, man, they, you know, but I ain't like that. Like, No, no, no. We have to have that culture in ourselves and our daily walk, just as John 3.30 says it so perfectly. Man, less of myself, but more of him. Like, man, I love that because we got to start walking like Jesus. And right here in this vision, he's showing, man, everyone is welcome. And, man, there's times we can look at people, including myself, that obviously we can compare ourselves with them. We can look, look at them. And even at church, not just at home or outside of here or at school or in our communities or on the news or wherever. And we look at people and we can, in a sense, judge them. And in a sense, we can ridicule them. And in a sense, we can look at ourselves and say, man, we ain't that bad, but that's bad, bad. We can have these thoughts and these things that we think about them. But one thing that I love and I want us to get here tonight is that, man, instead of criticizing their distinctions, Let's celebrate their distinctions because that's what God did. He celebrated. Man, man, I love that God accepted everyone as they were, as distinct as they were. God accepted it. Man, I love that, man. There's going to be people different than you and there's people different than me. Let me tell you, me and you, we are completely different. And I love that, man, God still welcomes me and God still accepts me. And I love that. And man, One thing that I love just even about this scripture that I think is so good, and I want to read this other scripture because I feel like it's so good. It's so good. How can I not talk about this? This is is the last point, okay? This is the last point. This is the last point. When we worship, we are humbled before God. Oh, that's so nice. I'm going to say it twice, okay? When we worship, we are humbled before God. Because we can get in that moment of criticizing and ridiculing instead of celebrating, man. But I love that right here, what they were doing, they were all worshiping the multitudes all together as one church, as one 
people as the children of God. And there was no ridicule. There was no critique. There was no none of that stuff. It was just, man, the goal here is Jesus and Jesus alone. We're here to exalt one name and one name only, and his name is Jesus. Forget about how I feel about you. Forget about how I think you should live your life. No, we're here for Jesus and for Jesus alone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exalt his name high, not my own, but we're going to lift him Hi, I heard this story one time, and I'm ending right here. I heard this story that's so good that talks about two swimmers. One start, they both start at the same time. They were trying to race to get to the other side of the lake. And what they did was one, two, three, go. Boom. They start swimming. They're going in. Uh, 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 uh. And the story goes that the first person, the first swimmer, he gets tired after like two minutes, and he stops. And he's tired, and he's drained. And he's like, oh, I can't do it no more. I can't go on. And then the second swimmer, he's like, man, this brother lost. Look at him. All right, come on, man. I'm out here. Let's go. I won this thing. And he goes and he goes further. He goes further. And then eventually he gets tired. And he's like, oh, oh I, I can't make it. I can't make it. But at least I made it further than him. I mean, I didn't get to the other side. But, man, thank God I ain't, I ain't, I ain't get tired all the way then. Man, I made it further. What's the point of the story? The point of the story is you both lost. <laughs> Both of you guys didn't get to the other side. Just because you got a little bit closer, it don't make you better. You're still a loser, <laughs> right? You still didn't get there. And I love how the scripture says, man, we all, somebody say we all, we all fall short to the glory of God. None of us won. None of us got there. None of us reached to that point. No, we all fell short. So who are we? Who am I to say where you are in your journey? Who am I? to ridicule and critique, how about I celebrate you for even taking a step on the lake? Let me celebrate you for even taking a step to even come here. Let me celebrate you for taking the step to even watch this after I sent it like a thousand times. Let me celebrate your journey. Let me celebrate your distinctions. Maybe I ain't the standard because I ain't, but I'm going to celebrate you, man. And I love that when we worship God, it humbles us. It's like, man, who am I to do that? And I'm ending right here. Look at this scripture. It's so good. It's at Isaiah 25, 1. It says, oh, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I want everybody to say this. Say, I will. Oh, come on. Say it with some faith. Everybody say, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. Psalm 63, 3 through 5 says this too. I love this. It's good. Because your steadfast love is better than life. Ooh, man. The love of God, I love how he explains it. The love of God is better than life, man. And he says, because of that, my lips will praise you. Verse 4 says, so I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food. And my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. Man, if you're here right now, you're watching wherever you're from and you're watching from this campus. Man, I want us to take a moment. And to worship our God. You see, worship is something that, as it was just saying right here in the psalm, that, man, it's for our soul. And I know we can come here on a Friday night, and I know you probably do what you regularly do, and you come here and you sit down, and you just spectate, right? You're like, oh, yeah, it's a cool little vibe. It's dope. Oh, they got live music playing? Oh, man, that's awesome. Like, oh, dang, they got lyrics on the screen. What, this karaoke night? Come on, let's go. Like, no, 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 no. It's not karaoke night, no, it's none of that. It's not just a live band playing. What we do, every service, every Friday, if you go to our weekend service, we do the same thing. Is we take a moment to do what it just said in Isaiah, to praise him, to exalt his name high. Same way it said it just in this psalm. It says, man, why do I do this? Because God's love is so good. It's better than life, actually. And I love at the end, it says, man, it satisfies my soul. Let me tell you right now, there's multiple times, multiple times in Scripture 
where worship just did something for the soul. Maybe you're watching this right now, and I want to encourage you to take a moment right now. We're going to jump into this moment. Man, we're even going to give you another opportunity to do something that satisfies your soul, which is to worship the God who saved your life, the God who loves you no matter what, the God who has given you a peace that surpasses all understanding, to exalt the name above every name. His name is Jesus, to exalt and to praise the one who has been blessing you this whole time, whose hand has been carrying you through your entire life, through the name, and the name that is above every single name. His name is Jesus. Right now, I want everyone to stand to their feet. If you're watching this online, I want you to do the same thing, man. It don't matter where you're from. We're going to take a moment and we're going to worship God. Lou, how do we do that? What do I do? Do I just sing? Do I just sing? Yes, sing. Uh, hey, right here in the scripture says, man, we're joyful. We're, right from our lips, we're going to sing. Even if you don't know how to sing, it don't matter, right? I promise you, there's like a filter in the air. that God, You're like, oh, man, I don't sound that good. No, no, no. But to God is beautiful. And I want you right now as you're standing to do a second thing. To do what it just said right here, man. Right when we jump at this moment, don't just stand around. Oh, let me just say. No, right here it says, man, I'm going to lift my hands. You know what that means, to lift your hands? It's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of saying, you know what, God? You the man, bro. It's you. You're the, I'm here for you. I surrender my life. It's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of saying, God, I can't do this on my own. I need you. It's a sign of us humbling ourselves and exalting him. I love even how the scripture says, man, those who exalt themselves, God will humble. And those who humble themselves, God would exalt. Hey, we're going to pray right now. And man, we're going to have our our student director, wherever you are in this campus, they're going to come up. We're going to have that moment to lift our hands and surrender and to worship the God who saved our life. Let's pray. God, I thank you. I give you glory, honor, and praise, God. God, thank you that this is the moment where we can worship. And, Lord, it just humbles us. It just humbles us to know who are we. We are sinners. We are broken. Just like everybody else, we didn't win. We all lost. We all fell short. But we can come before your throne of grace in the utmost confidence, lift our hands, sing out praise from our lips, as broken people, as distinct people. And God, we can exalt your name high because it is you who made us worthy and it is you who is holy and it is you who is perfect and it is you who has saved us. Even in your perfection, God, you died for our brokenness, Lord. So we get to come here together as one people, as one church, even though we're distinct, different, and unique in our own ways. We get to worship you and lift your name high, God. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. How I live for the moments when I'm still in your presence. All noise dies down, Lord, speak to me now. You have all my attention, I will linger and listen. I can't miss a thing, Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new, so I surrender You're the fire in the morning, 
You're the cool in the evening. You're the breath in my soul and the life in my bones. There is no hesitation in your love and affection. It's the sweetest of all. powerful time of worship man it's just something about when you lift up your hands and as a sign of surrender that man like it just said right now in the song man it satisfies it satisfies the soul so man 
I'm glad that you just had that moment, man. And I pray that you have even more moments when you're going through stuff, when you're dealing with things, when you're thinking things, when, man, life is just rough, man. Have that moment to just lift your hands and worship and sing praises and exalt the name of God, right? Wherever you are in school and at your job and community, here at church, when you come in with no shame, I'm lifting my hands and I'm going to praise and exalt the name above every name. Jesus, man, I love y'all so much. And if you want to get connected, if you say, man, oh my goodness, God did something in my life. This is so good. I need to get connected. I would encourage you to go to cfmiami.org slash students. Hey, CF students, we love you so much. And we pray that this time was just an amazing time that it helped you follow Jesus. Love you. Have an amazing week.